Okay, so let's jump right into it. I have this simple server, very boring, as I mentioned earlier. It has one route, the default route, and what that does is return the running message saying server is running on this port. And we gotta make sure we export the server as well so that we can test this against this. Now, we need to run tests. What can we use to run tests? There's a module called Mocha. We're gonna npm i install hyphen d, capital D is short for dash dash save dev. So you can do it that way or you can do it like this. We'll do that for now. Mocha. We install that and that's going to be the tool that we're going to use to run tests with. Now when I, the way we can get going with setting this up really quick is we go to our package JSON, we go into the test script and you just put in Mocha in here. Mocha. And now when I come back to my terminal, I run npm test. Bam. It's broken. It's still not working because it's like, hey, Brian, there's no test files. What do you want me to do with that? There's nothing to do here. So I have a test folder I created. In there, I can create a test file. The file that I want to test in my project is server.js. So I'm going to say server.spec.js to signify this is a test file. Notice the icon is a little beaker as well now. And now if I run npm test, haha, it runs, but zero passing, but it goes through successfully. Cool, we're done. Just kidding. Now we need to start actually testing our code. So we're going to pull in the server require and we need to go up a folder to get the server and save that and when it comes to writing tests using mocha there's a function available to you called describe and what this does is it allows you to kind of group tests together uh, and I'm gonna call it server and then there's a function callback and now within that function is where I can start writing my unit tests or just tests in general so the way that gets to executed is through a function called it and this allows us to write our test in like English format. And the way I generally like to, by convention, uh, name these is say, it should return the running message for the default route. Because we're gonna call the default route against our server. And then that also takes in a function callback. And within here, there's a parameter that's returned to us called done, which allows us to say, hey, we're done evaluating the result of running this test, basically. So we're going to leave it like that. And also, the other thing is, since we're using this server, we need to, when we're done running all of our tests afterwards, hold on there, we use a function here. And in there, we're going to say server.close so that that doesn't like keep running and hold up memory in the background. So now if I run npm test, we could see it starts, it runs that test. It says it went through successfully because there's no errors or anything, or we didn't really assert anything either to check right now. So that brings me into the next part of this. We need to actually make a request against the server, like a fake version or instance of our server and see the result and response back to it. What can we do to do that? Well, we need another module now that we're gonna install as a de developer dependency, and that is called SuperTest. npm install hyphen d super test and while that's going that's installed now we can start using that i like to group my third party dependencies separately i'm going to call it request require super test so now what we can do is in our test here we can say request my server make it a get request against this route the default route and we want to expect a 200 response and then when it's done we're going to say end function call back here and then there we're going to get an error or a response and now we can start like checking things out so we can say let's just console.dir the response to see what's going on there and then we'll call done here instead now and get rid of this done so there we go so we're making a request against our server particularly it's going to be a get request against that and we want it to be 200 response so now if we run npm test Aha, it's passing. So we are getting that. Let's see what the response is like. We can see the full object. And here's what we want to test against, really. We want to make sure that the response text is like this. So I'm going to say expect uh, response.text.2 contain uh, server is running on port. So let's just do that for now. So now if we rerun this and let's get rid of the console.dir. We run npm test, it failed. Why did it fail? Expect is not defined. Aha, well, there is expect against the super test, but we need another assertion library that's available to us that's called chai. So we're going to npm install hyphen d chai. Well, not chair, oops, chai. 
while that's doing it, we can come in here and we're going to pull out actually this expect function from that module after we require chai. Not chair. I don't know why I'm obsessed with typing chair. Don't mind me. Okay, now if I run npm test in my terminal, we have done it, folks. Successfully running tests and evaluating and asserting things against our server. If you want to take this a step further, actually, we can install an extension that's a Mocha test runner, test explorer, rather. You install that. It's installed now. That opens up this new icon here in the activity bar on the right-hand side for me. might be the left-hand side for you. You click on that, and now we can see all the tests that we have here. We can press play, and we see they run through successfully all that fun stuff. And to take it an even step further, and this is the part that I think kind of gamifies writing tests and kind of encourages you and motivates you to write more tests, is looking at your code coverage. How do we get code coverage for running our Mocha and Chai assertions against our Node application? There's another module called Istanbul, but you install it through the name of NYC. Save that as a developer dependency as well. And the way we can do this is we're going to change our test script to say NYC Mocha. Now, if I run this NPM test here, at the very end, we'll see code coverage. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. Now, this is really like, of course, it's 100% for mine because it's a very simple node server. We have one little thing that we're taking action upon. But... If you can imagine a larger application where you have many different branches, statements, functions, and lines of code that you need to try and cover, this can be fun to try and get as close as you can to achieving 100% code coverage. So check all that out. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you. Have a good rest of your day. Peace out.